important features and life history of Eurasia. First, the scientific classification. Genus Eurasium belongs to kingdom Mycota, division Eumycota, subdivision Escomycotina, then class Escomycetes, order Eurasiales, and family Trichomyces. Now, the distribution and physiology. Eurasium is the Escomycete phase that is perfect state of Aspergillus species notably Aspergillus glacus with visible sclerotia present in the medium. The genus Eurasium is generally found in tropical and subtropical zones and occurs on substrates low in moisture that is xerophilic, very common in stored seeds, grows also on textiles, leather and materials coated with resins and lacquer such as furniture. The anamorphic state of Eurasium is aspergillus. The genus Eurasium contains several species that all grow exceptionally well at low water activities. They are therefore common in foods and feeds preserved with high concentrations of sodium chloride or sugar. The genus Eurasium is also an important mycotoxin producer. Nevertheless, there are no systematic studies on its species biodiversity in natural niches with low water activity. The genus Eurasium is represented by many species and the most common ones are Eurasium amstilodemi, Eurasium chivaleri, Eurasium cristatum, Eurasium echinolatum, Eurasium herbariorum, Eurasium intermedium, Eurasium lateritium, Eurasium medium, Eurasium microsporum, Eurasium neoglacum, Eurasium repanus, and Eurasium rubrum. So far, it has been reported that different Eurasium species have been occasionally isolated from moderately saline soils and waters, and recently Eurasium amstilodemi, Eurasium herbariorum, and Eurasium rubrum were isolated from the Dead Sea. Members of the genus Eurasium are found almost everywhere. They are trivially ubiquitous and have been isolated from penguin dung in the Antarctic and spoiled food steps all over the planet. They can utilize an incredible variety of substrates including plant debris, foods and feeds, fabrics, feathers, leather and dung. They have been associated with the biodeterioration of kerosene, paper, pesticides and rubber. They often grow on the surface of humid walls in cellars and stables, and their spores are found in high concentrations in attic crawl spaces, air conditioning ducts, house dust, and insulation. Although the majority of species are saprophytic, the genus also includes opportunistic pathogens of mammals, insects, and plants. The major natural habitats are soil and decaying vegetation. Water and temperature are the major factors influencing mycelial growth. Within the soil environment, they occur most frequently in subtropical, warm, temperate zones. However, some species are more common in tropical zones. Most species prefer moist habitats, although Several species are xerophilic. Whatever the optimal concentrations for growth, all species form abundant conidiospores that are resistant to harsh environments. Vegetative structure. The mycelium is well developed, profusely branched, septate, hyaline, and consists of interwoven mass of hyphae. The cells of the hyphae are multinucleate 
and mostly only one type of nuclei are present that is the hypha are monokaryotic but sometimes they may become heterokaryotic by the by the anastomosis of hyphae of two different strains that is positive or negative during mycelial differentiation certain cells enlarge develop a heavy cell wall and form t or l shaped foot cells that produce a single conidiophore perpendicular to the long axis of the cell the erect hyphal branch developing from the foot cell is the conidiophore which enlarges at its apex to form a rounded elliptical or club shaped vesicle the fertile area of the vesicle gives rise to a layer of cells called phyllides that produce long chains of mitotic spores called conidia or conidiospores the size and arrangement of the conidial heads as well as the color of the spores they bear are important identifying characteristics in addition to the conidio four other morphological structures useful for identification include clistothecia hilly cells and sclerotia both clistothecia and sclerotia are closed and usually round structures about the size of a poppy seed that may be so abundant as to dominate a colony clistothecia are the sexual reproductive stage and contain the meiotic ascospores born within the essay holy cells are thickened often globose cells that are associated with clistothecia sclerotia are rounded masses of mycelium with an outer melanized rind that microscopically resemble clistothecia but do not contain sexual spores they are believed to serve as resting structures that allow species to survive adverse growth conditions the species of eurotia mostly have some characteristic pigments in hyphae conidiophores and conidia the cytoplasm contains mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes the reservoir food material is in the form of oil globules a simple pore present in the center of each septum permits the flow of cytoplasmic contents between adjacent cells reproduction eurotia reproduces by vegetative asexual and sexual means first the vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction takes place by means of fragmentation each detached fragment is capable to develop into a new mycelium now the asexual reproduction asexual reproduction takes place by means of conidia which are formed in chains upon conidiophores the mycelium produces an abundance of conidiophores these are not organized in any way but arise singly from the somatic hyphae the hyphal cell that branches to give rise to the conidiophores is called the foot cell the conidiophores are long erect hyphae each terminating in a bulbous head the vesicle as the multinucleate vesicle develops a large number of conidiogenous cells are produced over its entire surface completely covering it one or two layers of conidiogenous cells sometimes termed stigmata may be produced according to the species the stigmata in the first layer are designated as primary and those of the uppermost layer as secondary when two layers of stigmata are produced the secondary are naturally the ones from which the conidia arise the conidium bearing cells whether primary or secondary are typical phyllides as the phyllides reach maturity they begin to form conidia at their 
tips one below the other in chains. The conidia are typically globose and unicellular with externally roughened walls. In some species, the uninucleate conidia soon become multinucleate by successive nuclear divisions, while as in other species, the conidia remain uninucleate. The conidia are formed inside the tips of the phyllides, which is actually a tube. A portion of the protoplasm with a nucleus at the tip of the stigmata is delimited by a septum. The protoplast rounds off, secretes a wall of its own within the tubular phyllides and develops into a conidium. In the meantime, a second protoplast below the first develops into a spore and pushes the first spore outward without disjunction so that a chain of spores is formed as the phyllitis protoplasm continues to grow and cuts up more conidia one below the other. The mature conidia may be colored due to the presence of pigments. The conidia are dispersed by wind. They germinate on suitable substratum, each producing a new mycelium. Sexual reproduction. In Eurotium, the sex organs Enthridia and Escogonia are produced close to each other on somatic hyphae. Both are multinucleate and elongate structures. Often helical, they coil around each other. Whether or not the Enthridium is functional, a pairing of nuclei takes place in the Escogonium. In homothelic species, the enthridium and escogonium develop on the same hypha or on two adjacent hyphae of the same mycelium. The female reproductive structure appears as a septate, loosely coiled hyphal branch. Its terminal cell is called as trichogyle. The subterminal cell is the escogonium below which lies a multi-celled stalk. The enthridium develops close to the escogonium on the same or nearby hypha. The enthridial branch, also known as polynodium, becomes two-celled by the formation of a septum. The upper cell forms the enthridium proper and the lower one the stalk. Both the enthridium and stalk are multinucleate and remain unicellular even at maturity. Before fertilization, the stalk of the enthridium elongates and coils and grows upwards in close contact with the escogonium until the enthridium touches the trichogyne. This is known as gametangial contact. The intervening walls at the point of contact of the enthridium with the trichogyne dissolve and the contents of enthridium are transferred into the escogonium through the trichogyne. The contents of the enthridium and the escogonium readily mix, but the fusion of male and female nuclei do not take place at once. The male and female nuclei arrange themselves in pairs within the escogonium and this is known as dikaryon. After fertilization, dikaryons are formed in the escogonium. This is followed by the septation of the escogonium. Each cell thus formed contains a dikaryon and develops into a multicellular uh, escogenous hyphae. In turn, each cell of the escogenous hyphae also has a dikaryon. The terminal cell of the escogenous hyphae curves to form a hook-like structure known as crozier. The two nuclei of dikaryon present in this cell divide by a conjugate division and thus four daughter nuclei are formed. Now septa are formed in the crozier in such a way that the penultimate cell has two daughter nuclei and the terminal and basal cells one daughter nucleus each. 
the two daughter nuclei present in the penultimate cell fused form a diploid nucleus. This cell functions now as the ascus mother cell and elongates to form an ascus. The diploid nucleus of the ascus first undergoes a meiotic division followed by mitotic division. Eight haploid nuclei are thus formed in an ascus and each of these ultimately transforms into an ascospore. In this way, eight globose or pyriform ascospores are formed in each ascus. At the same time, citrile hyphae develop all around the SI and thus form a ball-like fruiting body called clistothecium. The pseudoparenchymatous wall of the fruiting body is called as peridium. The SI break and release ascospores inside the clistothecium. The peridium economically important products obtained from genus Eurotium. The Eurotium species produced a common metabolite profile, all producing large amounts of flavoglycine, then aroglycine and isotetrahydroaroglycine as well as neoecanolines A and B, then echinoline, preecanoline, neecanoline E, then epiheviadride and quistin. Eurotium was originally known for producing hydroquinone pigments and a variety of anthroquinones such as physeon and quistin. These have been reported to occur mainly in the mycelium of a number of Eurotium species. Echinolin was first discovered in Eurotium echinolatum and has been reported from various strains of Eurotium emastilodemi and Eurotium ripens. Eurotium ripens has been reported as a cladosporin producer. Flavoglycine has been reported as weakly cytotoxic to HeLa cells to cause hepatic damage in rabbits inhibited mitochondrial respiration and induced mitochondrial swelling. It demonstrated antioxidant activity and was reported as synergistic with tocopherol. Cladosporin has insecticidal as well as antibacterial and antifungal activity. It also inhibited uracil and leucine uptake into bacillus brevis cells and the growth of etiolated wheat celluloptiles. Quistin has antibiotic activity and inhibited nucleoside import by a tumor cell line and in mouse lymphocytes. Diseases caused by Eurotium. Eurotium is known to produce harmful allergens that cause exposed individuals to have major health concerns. They are known to cause pulmonary and hemorrhage and hemosiderosis. In addition, individuals will also experience flu-like symptoms and headaches. Other complications associated with Eurasian include nose bleeds, hairless and chronic fatigue, loss of immune systems, diarrhea, sore throats and dermatitis. In France and Finland, Farmer's lung disease, FLD, a hypersensitivity pneumonitis common in agriculture areas, is mainly caused by Eurotium species. The presence of antibodies in patient serum is an important criterion for diagnosis. Dear students, this is all about Eurotium.